And I don't know what you're going through. Some of these kind, what you're going through can only come out or be delivered or can be changed by fasting and prayer. I don't know what it is and I'm sure you know your world and you know what you're going through. And, you, and I'm praying that today God would speak to you and inspire you and say, well, this is where I want to get in. Lord, help me. Today I want to talk about how fasting it leads us into victory. Apart from all the different causes, different uh, you know, purposes of fasting, um, one of the specific things that I want to talk about today is that fasting always leads us into victory. You know, when life hits us at a point where you feel that you have hit a dead end, all right? It's like you don't see a progress, you feel that you're stuck, you feel that you can't make any progress or, you know, you're trying everything in your natural strength, you just feel stuck in a place. I believe over the years in ministry, I've seen fasting can be a great tool to see God bring breakthroughs into our lives, all right? I'm not trying to promote fasting to be something above prayer, all right? And that's not what I'm talking about. It's a principle. When somebody steps into, uh, into a different zone to follow a principle, we would always reap the benefit or the power or the consequences of following a principle. You know, like the principle of faith. You know, when you operate in faith, the Bible says that you will experience the things of God in your life. You know, when you operate in the principle of giving, you would see the blessing of God in your life. Likewise, there are different principles. When you operate in the principle of forgiveness, you would see great peace and joy come into our lives. You know, these are biblical principles. And likewise, fasting is a principle. Every time, you know, not only for uh, physical needs, but you can also fast and pray just for a spiritual revival. You just feel that you're going cold. You just feel that you're just getting more you know, monotonous or just getting caught up in the mundane of everyday lives and you just feel that you're losing passion. You know, it's great to just call for a fasting time because fasting just opens the supernatural power of God over our lives. In fact, Jesus himself talks about the, the importance of fasting. And so, you know, as we move towards these 21 days of fasting and praying, you know, as I said last Sunday, if you remember, I talked about pursuing holiness. And that's the theme for these 21, where we're just pray, saying, God, would you revive me, Lord? Lord, would you, you know, create a new passion in each one of our hearts, Lord? And that's my prayer as a pastor of this church, that God would just kind of stir up you know, our passion that we just, you know, sometimes, you know, when you have um, um, a, 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 a drink, right, especially a fruit drink or juice, you know, sometimes you leave it long enough, you know, all the, the concentration settles down and only the water st stays on the top, right? And I believe sometimes life can take us into that place where, you know, we just begin, we just get stagnated and, you know, we need some stirring. And these 21 days of fasting and prayer is a time that I'm believing God, that God would stir up our hearts, that he would rekindle the fire in each one of our hearts, that we will get passionate for God. And, um, you know, we are committed. I'm committed. Our team is committed. All our pastors are committed to pray for God's breakthroughs and miracles to come into the life of each one of our church members. So this is a corporate call. The Bible advocates both a time of personal fasting and prayer, and also the Bible advocates a corporate time of fasting and prayer. Fasting should be a lifestyle where we do on an individual basis regularly, but there are times in the, biblic, in the in Bible we see that God calls for this corporate time of fasting, which is for a cause. And this time we are praying for a cause for God to revive and bring holiness or make us better people. And then we are also praying, you know, as always, the top three pressing needs in our lives, all right? And I'm sure we're all going through those seasons of life where we constantly want God to be involved in our lives. And I'm praying, and we will pray together for breakthroughs to come. And uh, while we do that, you know, we're not just waiting for 21 days to finish, but right on the day one or day five, I don't know, God can come on, come onto the scene and God can do a miracle in your life. Now, here's what I want to appeal to you. If you experience a miracle, would you please meet with one of our pastors because we want to celebrate that. 
because a testimony always glorifies God, number one, and also it inspires faith into somebody who's going through a similar condition or sometimes so discouraged that they want to give up and your testimony can be used by God to infuse faith into their hearts. So if you experience a miracle, please meet with one of our pastors after the service. So this is a time of a corporate prayer. And um, so I want to talk quickly about a particular scripture that God put in my heart from 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14, it says, thanks be to God who, come on everybody, who? Not just sometimes, not when he's in a good mood. They says, thanks be to God who, come on everybody, always, what? Makes, causes us to be victorious, who, who always leads us into victory. God always leads us into victory. Amen. Fasting is a principle that leads us into victory. And this morning I want to talk about, and probably some of you heard me preach this, but since we're getting a lot of new people, I thought I'd just kind of run through some of the basic understanding of fasting. Fasting doesn't change God, it changes us. Amen? You, you don't put pressure on God when you go on fasting. It's not a hunger strike. You know, there are believers who say, God, if you don't do this by this day, by this time, you have lost me. Really? Right? And so I, I understand, you know, sometimes we get desperate, we are so frustrated, we kind of give a deadline to God. But unfortunately, he's not bound by time. He's outside of time. Right? Now, listen to this. <clears throat> Fasting is not a principle where we are, it's not a principle that makes God obligated to do just because you're fasting. What is the whole idea of fasting? Now listen to this. Fasting is a choice that you make saying, I want to take time off and dedicate myself to pray and, and fix my eyes on God and seek God more intentionally, more, um, much more time than I, what I do every day. All right? That's exactly what we do. Fasting is, you're saying, I want to give up on food. Now, giving up on food, I mean, God is not interested in you giving up on food, but what it talks about is, what's important for me to survive on? I want to give it up. And in giving up, it's an, it's an act of sacrifice. Now, listen to this. Sacrifice is a principle. When somebody sacrifices, God cannot help but to show up and bless. All right? Likewise, in the, in the Old Testament, I, remember, I think I, I also shared this last Sunday, that every time there was a sacrifice made, it attracted the presence of God. So when you sacrifice, like when you sacrifice your time, you serve God. It attracts the presence of God, whether you like it or not. Right? You sacrifice your finances and give generous, it attacks the presence of God. Sacrifice, anytime you make a sacrifice, God is no debtor to anyone. Amen? Sacrifice attracts the presence of God. So giving up on food, not because you're busy, but you can, but you choose not to, and dedicate, it, dedicate the time to pray and seek the face of God, it attracts the presence of God. So fasting helps us to concentrate and look for a breakthrough to come into our lives. I want to give you an example of what Jesus actually talked about. I don't know if you remember the incident when the disciples were brought uh, a demonized child, all right, in Mark 9, 17. Mark 9, 17, where it says, Then one of the crowd members answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who had a mute spirit. And whenever... He, uh, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I went to your disciples and they, that they should cast it out, but they could not. Now I hope you remember this story. They take <clears throat> the boy to the disciples and they prayed, they did all the things that they know, nothing happened. Verse 29 is what I want to look at. So the disciples come and ask him, Lord, why is it that when we prayed, nothing happened, but when you prayed, it happened? Jesus says, this kind, or some of these kinds, 
of circumstances can only be overcome, I'm kind of paraphrasing it, right? By fasting and prayer. Right? So it's like, you know, in the demonic world there are different levels. And this kind of a possession that the boy had required a different level of the power of God to manifest. So Jesus teaches us an important principle. He says, some of these kinds comes out or is changed only through fasting and prayer. And I don't know what you're going through. Some of these kind, what you're going through can only come out or be delivered or can be changed by fasting and prayer. I don't know what it is, and I'm sure you know your world, and you know what you're going through. And, you, and I'm praying that today God would speak to you and inspire you and say, well, this is where I want to get in. Lord, help me that you give me the strength, Lord, to fast and pray that I could actually overcome. And I'm praying these 21 days of fasting and prayer that together we will see God bring breakthroughs into our lives. Fasting is a sign of humility. Fasting is a sign of humility. In Psalm 35 verse 13, Psalm 35 verse 13, it says, As for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. And I humbled myself with fasting. So fasting is a sign of humility. You know, what's humility? Humility is not the way we speak or the way we walk or the kind of clothes that we wear. Humility is the attitude to say, I can't, I need help, and God, I depend on you. That's humility. Humility is a constant dependence on God. Now, I wish we had more time, but if you look at the, the pattern in which God provided for the children of Israel in the land of uh, the wilderness, he said, every day I'm gonna go rain manna, you have to pick it up only for that day, right? Because God taught them how to depend on him. The day we become self-dependent or self-reliant and think about it's my wisdom, my education, my whatever, right? Then we come, we put ourselves in a place where I don't need God. So one of the things that God always hated in the, all through the Bible is pride. Pride, you may not say it, but it, we can behave. So humility is a sign to say, God, I thank you, but I still believe I can't. I need your help. So it says, as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth, which is an external sign of uh, depending on God. And it says, and when my prayers returned into my own bosom, you know what it says, when I felt that my prayers are not answered, I humbled myself with fasting. When sometimes our prayers are not answered, fasting can take us to the next level and to see a breakthrough. And I'm not saying that you should do that all the time. But sometimes, you know, when we feel that our prayers are not going anywhere, you feel that you're stuck, fasting can bring a breakthrough in our lives. Amen? I want to quickly run through a story from the Old Testament from 2 Chronicles 20 about how God provided a strategy in a difficult time while King Jehoshaphat was leading the people of God. In 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 1, it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites, right? So not only one, a couple of group of people came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Verse 2, then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazanon, Tamar, and then it goes on. It gives all the geographic locations. Verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. You know, that's a great place, right? Now, it's almost like our own circumstance. You know, when you feel that there is a lot of things coming against you, when you feel that there are a lot of things coming against you and pressing you, and you just feel that you're stuck in a place, right? Very similar to that. And you are filled with fear. You just are filled with uncertainty in your life. And it says, and Jehoshaphat said, I'm going to set myself, I'm going to dedicate myself to fast and pray. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. 
right? I hope you know the story that everybody comes together and says, Lord, how, you know, they're saying, Lord, we need help. It's a sign of humility. It's a sign of dependency. He says, God, we can't handle this in our strength. So I don't know what you're going through. And if you feel, Lord, I need help in this area. And I'm praying that God would help us to set ourselves to fast and pray to experience a breakthrough to come into our lives. Amen. Just this morning, I want you to open your hearts to God so God can inspire you, challenge you. In verse 14, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, and then it gives a lot, bunch of uh, lineage, all right? Now, while they were fasting, the Spirit of the Lord came upon a person. Verse 15, and he said, listen, all of you Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Church, this morning, if you don't remember anything that I shared with you, I want you to know this, that during these 21 days of fasting, if you are filled with fear, if you are filled with uncertainty, if you feel that you don't, you've tried everything in your natural strength and you've hit a wall and you are, you know, you're, you're perplexed and you're thinking, what am I to do? I believe this is the word of the Lord says, the battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. Amen. Maybe you heard this sermon um, you know, many times. Maybe you've fasted many times. Maybe some of you have a lifestyle of fasting. You know what? I'm asking you to set your eyes on God and say, Lord, we need help, Lord. I can't do this in my strength. And I want you to ask each one of you to commit yourself so that together we can pray, ask God for, a break, for breakthroughs to come into our lives. You know, we are praying as a church for, you know, to, for us that we would be intentional to pursue holiness. That we are praying for, you know, financial breakthrough, the needs of the church. But we are also praying for each one of you and, you know, for your prayer request that God would demonstrate his power as we fast and we, as we pray. Some of these things wouldn't come out except by fasting and prayer. I just believe that we are hitting a season like that and I want you to join with us not just for the church but each individual because as a church we are committed to pray and ask God Lord we're gonna come through we're gonna come together to pray for a breakthrough to come into our lives Lord amen